Hey guys, wanna build a robot? What is up guys? It is 2021 and I am so excited for the future of ACVR. Now, first of all, I want to apologize. It has been so long since we posted a video. We have been busy working on some exciting new projects. And so now that it's 2021, it's a new year, we think it is high time for a new robot. And so we decided that 2021 was the perfect opportunity to revamp one of our classics. Now, some of our older videos way back in the day were all about the Rover. And while that was a pretty good robot, you know, there are so many ways in which we can improve on it. And I'm happy to announce that we have. Now, with the new Rover, we've added in a ton of new features, and I'm excited to tell you about it. But before I do, let's see this thing in action. It's a pretty rad little robot. So in this video, we're going to talk about the process that we went through to design it, as well as give you guys the files you need to build your own. As always, we have the Rover available in our shop. Uh, we also have all of the files available on our blog post to help you guys build your own, if that's the direction you want to take. You know, we here at ACBR are all about empowering you guys, the makers. Let's take a look. One of the first things we did when we started redesigning the Rover was swap out the RF Nano for an ESP32. Those of you guys who have been around on the channel for a while know that we are a huge fan of both, but the ESP32 offers so many more opportunities for wireless communication. Thanks to the onboard ESP32, the new Rover can be controlled with a PS3 controller, a smartphone app, a web page, pretty much anything. Another thing we did this time around was design the entire chassis from scratch. That was a ton of fun, and we'll go through that process in this video. We also thought this was an awesome opportunity to add in some new features. So the new Rover has four WS2812 RGB LEDs, also known as NeoPixels, tons of GPIO pins, a built-in buzzer, and a bunch of headers for things like servos, a camera, and really anything you want. It's a really fun ESP32 powered adventure robot. It's got a ton of awesome features, it's perfect for the classroom, you can even take it outside and, you know, drive it around. It's, it's really a super versatile platform, and so that's why we wanted to make this video so that way we could share it with the world. Now, along with this video about how we went through the process of designing the circuit board and the chassis and all of that, we actually have a whole series of videos that goes through one of our brand new eBooks. It's like 60 pages jam-packed with how to program the lights, the uh, motors, the sound, really every aspect of this Rover. And so keep your eyes out for other videos down the road about how to program each and every aspect of the new Rover. First things first, let's talk about how we redesigned the circuit board. We had a ton of fun redesigning the circuit board for the Rover. And in this case, we used Easy EDA. Now, there are so many awesome alternatives out there for PCB design software. And if you have your favorite, I say go for it. In this case, we use Easy EDA because it's free and it's cloud-based and open to everybody. So each and every one of you guys can take these files from us, you can edit them, you can take our Gerber files, really do whatever you'd like. The first step was adding in the ESP32. We also wanted to make sure to add in headers. So we have headers for each and every one of the pins on the ESP32. This means you can access all of the pins and customize this like crazy. Now, in recent months, our motor driver of choice has been the DRV8871. I love this motor driver. With only two pins, you can control speed and direction of our smaller motors like on the Rover, even much larger Rovers. I'm pretty sure peak amperage is like 3.7 amp. So it's a super versatile and really, really easy to use motor driver. And the support circuitry is pretty easy. We have a 47 microfarad cap here, we have a 100 nanofarad cap here, and we have a 30K resistor for uh, current limiting. Next, we have our four WS2812s. These are more commonly referred to as NeoPixels, and these are a ton of fun. So these are individually addressable LEDs, which means not only can we control whatever color they are, we can also program them independently. And so here we chain them together. So data in comes from our ESP32, but data out goes to each one of these pixels. You see we have data in, data out, data in, data out. We also have a decoupling capacitor here, which is not always necessary, but a good idea to throw in. Now, we wanted the rover to be able to power all kinds of things, even a bunch of servos. And so we decided to add in some really robust buck converter circuitry here. Now, the two 18650s give us a combined voltage of about 8.4 volts at fully charged. 
And so the ESP32, right, it has its own 3.3 volt regulator on it. And so what this does is this drops down that 8.4 volts to a nice clean 5 volts. Because we're using a buck converter, we're not limited by the current. And so we still have the ability to power our lights, also power our servos, and anything else that requires 5 volts. We decided, of course, to add in some headers for some servos to make plugging in robotic arms and pan tilt modules super, super easy. And lastly, we have our buzzer. Now, this is a super simple buzzer, right? All it needs is one pin for a PWM signal, and the other pins are connected to ground. All in all, it's a pretty simple little board. Now, we have this whole schematic available on the blog post that's linked in the description of this video if you want to take a closer look. We also have the easy EDA file if you want to customize this and make it your own. And this is what our circuit board looks like once we have everything laid out. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire process of uh, laying out the whole circuit board here, um, but if you'd like to, again, you can edit that file if you want to make your own. So in this example, we have the middle of our board. This is all of our buck converter circuitry. So this is what takes the uh, 8.4 volts from the 18650s and converts that to 5. We hit the onboard buzzer right here in between the pins of the ESP32. Over on this side of the board, we have our motor drivers. And so here are both of those DRV8871s. Up top, we have our servo pins. And on the bottom, we have our WS2812s. Now, there are tons of different ways you can organize these boards. And this is how we decided to design our Rover. We wanted to keep the board relatively small while still offering a bunch of really cool features. Our next step in updating the Rover was getting our chassis designed. And to do that, we used an awesome online program known as Onshape. Now, I'm a huge fan of Onshape. It's not quite as advanced as something like um, Fusion 360 or even SolidWorks, but it's really, really capable. And so I actually used Onshape to design the whole chassis for the Rover update. So here you can see I have a CAD render of the chassis that ended up being what we used for our Rover update. Now, designing all these custom pieces is actually a lot easier than you might think, so if you've never done any CAD before, I highly encourage you to check it out. Um, what's so cool too is Onshape is also free and cloud-based, so you can work on this on pretty much anything. I have my students in class that use Onshape on their Chromebooks, and those things don't have very much power. So it's pretty possible to make your own files. Now, I'm not gonna go through the entire process of how to design each one of these pieces, but I did wanna show you just how easy it is to make your own custom pieces. Now, we're going to have the DXF files for all of this stuff available on our uh, on the blog post that we have with this video. And so you can have these and download them and send them to a laser cutter and cut them out yourself. Um, I will say that this material is designed for a 2.5 millimeter thickness. So if you're using a different thickness of material, you'd have to alter a few things. But doing that is super easy. Once you've imported the DXF files into a CAD program like Onshape, you know, if you wanted to go through and customize this, it's pretty straightforward. So, you know, right here I have an extruded shape. But if I open up the sketch, we'll see that this shape is just nothing but a bunch of lines. So all I did is I went through with the line tool and I designed this piece right here. Now, I wanted to make sure that these uh, these holes lined up with the motor and you know it took me a while to get all of this stuff right here. But let's say you wanted to customize it. If you wanted to use something like Onshape to customize these files, you totally could. And so the file type I like to work with the most is called a DXF. And so once you have this design and it's ready to go, all you need to do to get this laser cut is export this drawing as a DXF file. So in Onshape, it's super easy. All you have to do is right click on this sketch. And export as DXF. Now I have a company who cuts this stuff out for me. So we use a uh, 2.5 millimeter aluminum right here. And so if you know, if, if you have a laser cutter and want to cut this out of acrylic, or you could even take the DXF files and 3D print them if you extruded it out and export it as an STL, there's tons of really cool stuff you can do. And so if you feel like customizing things, I highly recommend it. Um, and you may be even be able to find a metal shop, you know, wherever you live uh, that has the ability to cut this stuff out. You know, I'll, I'll leave that up to you guys. Um, but it's really fun to make your own custom chassis, um, especially using something like Onshape. And so if you have the opportunity to do so, I highly, highly encourage it because it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So once you have the PCB designed and you have the, uh, the chassis designed, all that's left is to program it and have fun. And so again, you know, because we have that ESP32 in there, there are so many crazy cool things you can do with this.
So if you're looking for more resources about this hardware and you know how to program and do all this awesome fun stuff, um, check out the blog post that we have linked in the video description. So you know there we're gonna have a link to our ebook and that has like 60 pages full of really awesome projects that you can do with the Rover. So if you end up grabbing the DXF files and the Gerber files and making one of your own, or you end up picking up one from us, there is so much fun that can be had with the Rover. So um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, you know, this discussion about what we go through whenever we design a new robot. And I hope that information can help you design your own robot. You know, we here at ACBR are all about sharing the joy of robotics, you know, because we have a ton of fun building robots and we know people all around the world do as well. So of course, also, you know, keep your eye on the channel for more videos. We have a lot more content coming up. So uh, if you want to keep up to date, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So that way you're up to date and you know whenever we're putting out new videos. Um, you know, we have a lot of fun designing boards and, and building robots and there's a lot more fun projects to be had. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great day.